Hello everyone and welcome to Vantage Corner. In the previous video, we have installed OpenWRT on our Raspberry Pi 4 with a single network port and we set up VLAN to configure the one and the LAN interfaces. And in this video, we are going to install a second Ethernet adapter to it. So I will be using this USB 3.0 to Gigabit Ethernet port and this will be our one interface while the on port Ethernet port will be our LAN interface, right? So this is what we're going to do on this video. And first of all, let's navigate to the OpenWRT table of hardware to get the firmware and install it to the SD card. This tutorial can be applied to the Raspberry Pi 2, 3, and 4 as long as it has a USB port, right? So let's navigate to the table of hardware and get the firmware. So let's open google.com and then to open the URT Raspberry Pi TOH table of hardware, right? So this is our table of hardware and as you can see the supported versions are the Raspberry Pi 2, 3 and 4 right so I'm using the Raspberry Pi 4 so I will be going to this page Raspberry Pi 4 the snapshot version and what makes the snapshot version different from the other stable release is that it doesn't have Lucy so we need to configure everything via the command line or else if you are running the Raspberry Pi 3 or 2 then you can just download this stable version and it have Lucy built in right so let's go to the text data page and then get the firmware so firmware open the artist snapshot install URL we just need to get this one and save the file right it will take some time depends on your internet connection before we proceed with the installation, let me show you the network diagram that I currently have. Right, so this is the internet connection from the internet service provider and it goes to the modem and then to my MicroTit HAP AEC tools. And this is my current network 10.0.1.0/24. We need to first config the Raspberry Pi at a client to this HAP AC2 router because we need to have a working internet connection in order to update the package and install Lucy and install all the USB driver, right? So I will be config the Raspberry Pi 4 at a DSCP client first and it will have an IP address of 10.0.1.150 ready and let's install it to the SD card. Right, so this is the OpenWRT firmware that we have just downloaded today and hit open. So as you can see right here, we have our boot device, which is the SD card and everything looks great. So just click start to proceed. Right, so the firmware ready and let's just plug in into our Raspberry Pi 4 and powering everything up. Let's install the SD card to the Raspberry Pi 4. And then powering it up with the USB Type-C cable. Right, it is up now. After that, we will use an Ethernet cable to connect the Raspberry Pi to the computer, right? Because at the first boot, we will have an IP address of 192.168.1.1 for the interface. So, yep, this is what we need to do first. Right, so now we should be able to reach the Raspberry Pi at 192.168.1.1 and let's check. Ping 192.168.1.1 we have a good response and let's see if we can access Lucy's. As you can see, nothing show up at 192.168.1.1 because we are using the snapshot version and Lucy is not installed by default, right? So we need to manually install it later. Okay, so now we need to establish the SSH connection to the routers and do some of the configuration. Like I said before, we need to 
uh, set the last IP address of the Raspberry Pi to 10.0.1.150 and then turn off the DSCP for it and then connect it to our Mikrotik router in order to have a working internet connection, right? So let's just do this, right? So I will be using uh, Putis and as you can see it is root at 192.168.1.1 and the port is 22. Click open and yes. This is OpenWRT running on the Raspberry Pi 4 and as always, let's set a password. Right, as I said now, we, as I mentioned, we need to change the LAN IP address of the Raspberry Pi 4 and then turn off the DSCP. First, we will turn off the DSCP server on this router. There are different ways to do this and I prefer editing the system configuration file. So v etc slash config slash dscp, right? So this is our dscp configuration file for the LAN and one interfaces. We are using v editor and we are at the view mode or the command mode. And we are unable to edit the text inside. So we need to press the I key to switch to the insert mode. Right, so let's navigate to the DSCP configuration for LAN and then you can just add one more line which is options ignore equal to one. Right, so option ignore one and then we can just delete the options limit and options star. Right, so once we're done, this should look like this. Press the escape key to switch back to the command mode, right? And then press semicolon W Q for right and quick. Right, so we done turn off the DSCP server and now let's change the LAN IP address. So V slash etc slash config slash network. We will be doing the same thing press the I key to switch to the insert board and then go to the options IP address just right here we need to change it to something like 10.0.1.150 okay for the next max it's just the default one we also need to add the gateway and the DNS server so that this interface can communicate with the internet right so options DNS then one night i can put something like one night uh, 10.0.1.1 and then option gateway 10.0.1.1 okay let's have a final check before we commit the change everything looks great and then let's save the change right quick now we can reboot the routers Now the Raspberry Pi 4 should up and running with the IP address of 10.0.1.150 and let's connect the Raspberry Pi 4 to our Mikrotik router, right? So this is the LAN port, just remove it. And then this cable is from this router, so it will be connected to the Raspberry Pi 4. Let's have a check if we are able to reach the Raspberry Pi 4 with the new IP address. So ping. 10.0.1.510 Looks right, so we have the response from the Raspberry Pi 4 and let's just establish the connection to it, right? Hit open, yes, give it a password. Let's run ifconfig and see how our network looks like. Right, so this is our LAN interface. It is 10.0.1.150 and let's check if we're able to reach the internet. So ping google.com. Hmm. Ping google.com. Ping 1.1.1.1. Right, so we're able to ping 1.1.1.1 but not Google. So there should be something wrong with the DNS server. Okay, 
so we need to edit the DNS server. So let's do the same thing v slash etc slash config slash network and then press the I key to switch to the insert mode. And for the DNS server, let's switch to the Google public DNS server instead. Dot a dot a dot a. That's it. Right Q. Serve it. Network. Restart. Right. So let's check. Looks right. So we are able to reach the internet. And the first thing, let's do OPKG update to update the package database in order to install Lucy. And now let's install Lucy. OPKG install Lucy. Let's check if we're able to reach the Lucy management page of the router 10.0.1.150 and looks ready, we are able to reach the routers and let's just log in. Mm -hmm. Okay, never mind. Right, so this is OpenWDRT running on Raspberry Pi 4 model B. We have Lucy installed and now let's install the driver for the USB to Ethernet adapter. So let's go. Let's go to system and then shopware. Even though we have different manufacturers of the USB to Ethernet adapter, but we can just install this single package and it should do all the installation for us. So this will be the package that we are using and it should work fine for all the Ethernet adapter. Right? So just search for it. Press install. And let's wait for the magical thing happen. Right, look great. Now let's install the USB to the Ethernet adapter to the routers. And for this tutorial, I am using the DUB1312, but you can use any of the Ethernet to USB adapter. So let's connect it to the USB 3.0 port. Right and then no link so now let's try to connect this network cable from the router right so this is the cable from the sap ac2 let's try to connect it right Let's see as you can see nothing happened the line is not turning on and this is because we haven't configured this interface on OpenWRT. So let's back to the computer and just do this. Right, so let's go back, refresh the page, log in to Lucy, and let's go to network interfaces. So now we need to add a new interface. So this will be our one interface, and I will just using this one interface name because I don't want to reconfig the one firewall zone. So the protocol, the SCP client, and if you're using like PPPoE, then you can select the protocol accordingly. On the interface section, select your Ethernet adapter. So Ethernet 0 is our physical port, just this one. And Ethernet 1 is this interface, right? Click create interface. And then on the physical tech thing, it looks great. On the firewall, make sure you assign it to the one interface. 
on the firewall set thing, make sure you assign it to the one firewall zone and then hit save. Now hit save and apply. And if you take a look right now, you should see the line on the USB to Ethernet adapter light up, right? So let's see. As you can see, the one interface has successfully received an IP address from the DSCP server of the Mikrotik routers and it has an IP address of 10.0.1.218. Right, so now we have a one interface up and running and let's reverse the LAN interface to 192.168.1.1. Alright, so first of all, click on edit buttons and then on the IPv4 address. On the IPv4 address, change it to 192.168.1.1. On the IPv4 gateway, we can leave it blank or we can configure it later. On the DNS server, we can just leave it like that. And then let's go to advanced settings. On the physical setting, just leave it there. On the firewall setting zone. And on the DSCP server, we can just turn it on. So like this, save and then save and apply. Now we need to connect the network cable from the computer to Raspberry Pi 4 LAN port and then open the browser with the new IP address of 192.168.1.1 and we can see the update that the configuration will change. And if you are unable to reach Lucy with the new IP address, then it will automatically fail over or it will automatically revert the chain back. So we need to do it fast, all right? And log into the routers. Okay, so network interfaces. And now we have two interfaces, LAN and one. I will be turned off the Wi-Fi. And now my computer is really connect to the OpenWRT router running on the Raspberry Pi 4. Okay, so this is my computer's IF config. Okay, I'm sorry, IP config. We are using too much Linux recently. And okay, so this is our IP address 192.168.1.158, and this is the default gateway. Okay, let's try to do a ping test, pinggoogle.com. And then, yeah, it looks great, right? So let's check the traffic. Okay, so this is our land interface. Let's run a speed test. Right, so I'm using the internet packet of 200 Mbps and we can see that with this OpenWRT router running on the Raspberry Pi 4, everything looks right. Let's go back to the real-time statistics and we can see that the traffic read 240 megabit per second or 30 megabyte per second, which is right. So that's it. We have successfully installed OpenWRT on the Raspberry Pi 4 and then we have install another USB to Ethernet adapter and we have successfully configured it at our one interface right so what else can we do with this setup well you can connect this dumb switch to the Raspberry Pi 4 and then you can extend your network so we can connect the Raspberry Pi 4 LAN port to the dumb switch and then we can extend the network to another four LAN ports Right, so that's all about today. So if you see the video in headphones, please like, share and subscribe to support the channel. And as always, if there are any questions or ideas, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Right, so thanks for watching and I will be see you all in the next video.